Hello there. Today we're going to cover uh, ECS ASG Blueprint. So we're going to cover this blueprint right here, this ECS ASG Blueprint. This blueprint, what it does, it creates a, a auto-scaling fleet of instances that uh, will register itself to the same actual ECS cluster as this ECS spot blueprint. And the reason why this is being done is just in case for like the rare incident where all the spot fleet instances are interrupted, then uh, you're going to have kind of failover capacity here. Okay, so um, we're going to launch this blueprint in both production as well as development. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. So here is the blueprint. Uh, there is a prerequisite. We have to set up your settings file and I've already set that up. Uh, it looks something like this. Uh, you have to set up your ADOS profile and point it to actually your profiles. This just kind of uh, allows us not to have to type out ADOS profile and export in order to remember switch accounts. I just loan with EMVs uh, will suffice to switch accounts, okay? Uh, there's another video where I uncover kind of settings, uh, setting up that in more detail. You should check out that video. All right, so after that's done, there's just three steps here in order to use the blueprint. You add the blueprint to your gem file, you configure the values, and then you deploy, and you're off and running, okay? Um, to add the blueprint, you actually don't have to do that because we're going to be using this reference architecture repo, which Ara has in the gem file. See, it has it kind of down here, blueprint, ECS, ASG, which basically calls gem, okay? So that's done. Now configure. Configure is pretty easy with the lono C command. You just run the lono C command, and then kind of generate some starter files for you. Uh, let's actually go to the right project here. Okay, and now we we'll run um, the Lono uh, C command for development as well as production. It generated two files. So you can kind of see it right here. It's opening up. Let's open up and actually check them out. <clears throat> one's development, one's production. You can see the required parameters is VPC and subnets. So we have to go grab the uh, subnets and then uh, then put them in there. So um, let's see. Uh, for subnets, you can just actually go to the VPC stack and look at its outputs. Then you can see kind of the subnets are all kind of right here. So uh, private app subnets right here. <clears throat> so this is development. And I also have, have to also grab the VPC. So I'm going to do that right now. Up here, replace the example. Okay, so that takes care of development. Now we got to do production. There's the VPC stack. There's the outputs. Uh, let's grab VPC. Um, right here and now just the subnets and I recommend running containers in the private app subnets um, they don't really need to be public because um, you could front it with low bouncers that are on the public subnet okay so I'm just checking over this and it looks pretty good to me so I think we're done with the parents file okay so we can go in the next step in, of the readme okay so this configure readme is just saying uh, here's the structure it generates which we just reviewed and then it just gives the example of the development one, uh, the parameters, and then it just says, you know, we, it recommends you to use the private subnets. It says repeat the process for production. Okay, so the last step here is actually just deploying and kind of we're done actually. So let me just grab these two commands and then start the deploy. <clears throat> so see if then deploy ES, uh, ASG and then uh, do the same thing for uh, for the production. So we're launching right now two uh, CloudFormation stacks, one in production and one in development that basically creates this uh, auto scaling a cluster of instances here. So let's go and verify that. Refresh this. You can see it. This production is create in progress. Let's go look at development. Same thing. Let's go, should it say create in progress? Okay, create in progress. Okay, so it's going to take a couple minutes for these uh, stacks to finish launching. So I'm going to pause the video so y'all don't have to wait. Okay, so the ECS ASG spot, uh, in, I mean, stacks finished creating. Right here, we can kind of click on it <clears throat> and click on events to see how long it took. It started at 2052 and it ended at 2057, so it took about uh, five or six minutes there. Okay, uh, one way to check whether or not it worked is to check the ECS or EC2 council first and look for running instances. And you can see the ES, uh, the auto scaling ones right here is nice and tagged. And there are the spot ones that we kind of created in another video. Okay, uh, we can also check the ECS cluster to see whether or not it registered to the uh, and cluster there's three container instances so that's all good and we can click on instance ECS instances there and you see kind of the the additional instance okay so that's all good let's also check production to make sure that that's working uh, let's go to yeah let's go to ECS first there's three container instances so that's good and let's also just look at EC2 for uh, for completeness here and then EC2 is right there so we are good let's go back to the readme now 
So that's kind of essentially it. The rest of the readme kind of covers different ways to access the instance. I strongly recommend using Session Manager. There's actually a script that sets this all up. I also covered this in the ECS uh, spot video too. And then it talks a little about security groups and how they kind of, the parameters kind of affect the way stack behaves. And I'm permissions and considerations. So let's review real quickly. All we did was really add the blueprint to the gem file, uh, configure uh, some values and then deploy. And then we were kind of done, okay? So that is it for the ECS ASG blueprint. Uh, hopefully you found this video, video helpful. Cheers.